Buffers are compounds that help to mitigate changes in pH. As living organisms, we have to take in food and drink, and we don't want all that orange juice that we're drinking throwing off our body's pH. So one way we self-regulate, remember that's a quality of life, is by using these buffering compounds. The way they work is by acting as both an acid and a base, depending on which direction the pH is moving. If the pH is falling, becoming more acidic, they can absorb protons. And if the pH is increasing, becoming more basic, they can release protons. In our blood, we use bicarbonate ions to buffer the blood and prevent big shifts in pH. This graph shows the effects of a buffer on a solution. In an unbuffered solution, the line with the red circles here, uh, we see that as the experimenter adds more droplets of acid, the pH drops at a consistent and linear rate. In the buffered solution with the orange, uh, orange yellow squares, uh, at around pH 9, as we add the droplets of acid, the buffer molecules start absorbing protons which slows the rate of pH decline. At a certain point, however, all of those buffer molecules will become saturated with protons and that buffering effect is gonna stop. Uh, this is true most of the time. Buffers are only gonna work within a narrow window of pH. Okay, our last topic for this chapter uh, continues in the theme of pH only at the ecosystem scale. Natural and human-caused burning decreases the pH of clouds, which leads to acidic precipitation. Uh, the effects of acid precipitation are varied. Uh, one example of an increase of carbon di uh, the The effects of acid precipitation are varied. One example is the increase of carbon dioxide from jet travel over oceans. You've heard of carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas, which is contributing to climate change through an overall warming trend. Additionally and unfortunately, the additional carbon dioxide has also increased the acidity of oceans, decreased the pH. As the carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it generates carbonic acid. This decrease in pH increases the solubility of calcium carbonate. Uh, calcium carbonate is the material which marine organisms such as clams, oysters, scallops, and perhaps most importantly corals use to build their exoskeletons. This pH decrease is also associated with a phenomenon known as coral bleaching, which threatens our planet's reefs and the myriad of organisms that depend upon them as a habitat. Coral bleaching going on here. Acidic precipitation can also disrupt the physiology of organisms such as these trees. The rain doesn't produce chemical burns, but the cumulative effect of altered pH over time can lead to life-threatening physiological disruption. We can also see the effects of acidic precipitation in urbanized areas. Here is a sculpture which is carved in limestone, which is calcium carbonate. The effects of long-term exposure are obvious in that the features of the face are no longer visible on this sculpture that's been exposed to acidic precipitation. Now, how do we know that's not just normal wear and tear? Uh, how do we know that industrialization is responsible? Well, as a final example, here's another limestone sculpture. Uh, this one was carved around 2,000 years ago in ancient Egypt, again from limestone. In 1881, the image on the left shows clear hieroglyphics that have persisted since the original time of carving. Only 120 years later or so, the hieroglyphics are no longer visible. And on that bummer note, we come to the end of Chapter 3. But Biology 1020 will return in Chapter 4, Diamonds Are Not Biologically Relevant.